Once a month or so, we invite digital living expert Lindsay Smith to leave her high-tech office to talk with us about software, hardware, apps, and new Apple products like the iPad 3. Lindsay is the CEO and founder of Massive Media Inc. And it is my pleasure to welcome Lindsay Smith back to Studio 4 to tell us more. And I should call you a digital living evangelist. Oh, yes, that's the fun way to say it, isn't it? It is. Sounds exciting. Uh-huh, the high-tech church. <laughs> the high -tech Why not? Church. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's about teaching and learning and collaborating and all sorts of cool things. Well, exactly. And uh, you were indoctrinated early, as I recall. You've been yeah. a tech for a long time. I've before. been a nerd since I was born. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, you yeah. were kind of born into to Nerdville, really, considering. Yes and no. Was I'm there a computer in your house when you were little? Actually, yes, that's true. I, my first computer was actually a Commodore 64. Do you remember those way yes. back in the day? Where you, Giant. With the floppy disks where you could. And the actually, wangs. They were called the wang. wangs or something in wangs. the office. Wangs. Wangs? I hope I've got it right. I don't know. I just remember the floppy okay. disks and playing Frogger and Donkey Kong. Those were like the first okay. video games. You see, I was uh, happy to have. Of a black and white television so we're a bit apart a little but a little uh, Jan Arden said uh, in the zoomer article recently it was hilarious so, uh, she said my parents think an iPad is a feminine hygiene product <gasps> and, uh, actually and when, fair and enough when people come <laughs> when people come to the house we should hide it yeah mm -hmm. so this iPad that's the old iPad this I'm is thinking. this is the first generation this is almost um, uh, archaic now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's it's. I it's don't been a know. While. I don't have one yet. There, there you go. Well, the, the Forrester Research is actually estimating that one in three homes will have a tablet device by 2016. And if we have a tablet device, do we need a laptop? Yes. Still. That would be my opinion on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, it, it actually. I shouldn't say that so definitively. I say yes because if you're doing business um, and and using it for he heavy usage, sure. then a tablet isn't mm -hmm. really going to cut it. It's more for surfing the web, um, light email usage, uh, a lot of personal reading, sure. ebooks, things like that. Taking pictures now. A that absolutely. doesn't have a camera, right? The first one? This, the first one doesn't. The second one, the second generation does. And the third one uh, actually has an, an even better camera built in. It's the iSight camera. I see. I'm suspecting, don't know. But if the third one's out, the second one's cheaper. Yes, they've just reduced the price on it by about $100. Mm. So yeah. why do I need to have the brand new one? You maybe maybe you don't. It's a good question. A lot of people are asking that. Uh, I would say that if you don't have a tablet uh, at all and you're looking to really go in, go in and explore it and enjoy it mm -hmm. for an extra hundred dollars, you're going to get a, a, a few more bells and whistles. And some of those things are uh, clearer picture. Uh, there's a Retina screen, so it's got four times the amount of pixels on the screen, so it just creates a much more vivid. Um, imagery as you're, like as you're looking def. at. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's also got um, HD camera on it uh, on both sides. So you can do video chatting and you can do recording. Um, that so if you're into really using it on a on a heavy usage for video um, right you're gonna edit. make a film or something if you're gonna yeah because you can get iMovie for it so you can actually do editing mm. right on the iPad and, and all the filming from there uh, again it's a little bit it's it's not as easy to use I would say uh, or you don't have as many options as if you right. were using the software from your computer but it's kind of a, it's it, it's a neat feature to have uh, another thing too is if you are one of these people like me that's really impatient about um, download times and, and video lagging and That's things like me. that. Uh, the iPad 3 runs off at LTE network. So what that means, it's a network that's just rolled out across Canada uh, and it's it, it basically transfer data at speeds up to 300 megabytes per second. Mm. The hardware that we have right now can't do that much. And when I say that number, it's, it's that's, a, that's a huge amount. But it's essentially building an infrastructure across Canada so that we can carry more data back and forth. Because this is the problem that we're running into, is we have so many apps now, so much information with the cloud of information being mm -hmm. passed back and forth between servers that are remotely somewhere else and the devices that we that we access the information right. from. You need a big, think of it like a highway to transfer that data back and forth. Sure. And the LTE network is the fastest, it's, it's like a 10 lane highway instead mm. of a, a two or three lane highway. I see, That's a two or three it. lane with a, a windy road and all of that. So, <laughs> uh, private cloud, the, my private cloud why do I want to go there? And is it private? And tell me about the cloud, well, is the question. The cloud in general, yes. So we, you compared it to keeping, I think you opened it up with data in the cloud. Is that? Yeah, I said, said there's no rain in this cloud. There's no rain in this cloud. I yes. don't think. <laughs> the cloud is, a, it's, 
okay, when you think back, the easiest way to describe it is when you think back to having your computer at home, how did you get mm -hmm. your programs on that computer? You, you would have a, a disc, mm -hmm. and you would put that disc into your computer, and you would load the programs onto the computer right. and keep the data on the computer itself. Right. I, no, I'd call Kenny to do that. Okay, you would call your IT person <laughs> to do that. Yes. But that's, that's essentially the process no, that's happening. It. You're storing your data and you're storing your programs on your computer. With the idea of the cloud, your programs are your apps. You're, you're, okay. you're no longer downloading a lot of information to your, um, and running things off your computer. I mean, the apps are technically running off your computer, but the data that they're pulling, like storage, right. is out there in the cloud. So there's this the, the benefit to, get to consumers and people with this is that you can keep the, door to, the data in a, in a off, uh, place that's outside sure. of your computer, but you can share it easily no matter where you are. No so, matter where you are. Yeah, that's operative. Well, it, I mean, if you're, if you're on the network, of, if you're within a Wi-Fi network or you're on a 3G or 4G now, um, which is 4G LTE right. network, then you're going to be able to access the data just by simply having a username and password for different applications. Okay, but everybody that you want to see this has the, has the code, right? I'm just thinking privacy. You put it all up there in the cloud. Yes. Who has access to it? Well, it's going to be as secure as the application that you're, that you're storing, okay. storing your data with. So you would have to look at whether it is Evernote is a very popular app where you can store all sorts of notes and, and mm -hmm. photos and pin websites that you enjoy and things like that. The security of that is going to be based on how, Ever, how the Evernote application is, okay. is built. And who's on top of this? I mean, I, I read certainly that BlackBerry is having a few struggles because they don't sync as well and... There, you know, I have to say that I'm not happy with any of the syncing between any of the devices. I think we're still in our infancy of watching how data syncs back and forth through the cloud. Uh, I think Google has done a really good job with their um, with their business applications and their Android phones. Okay. When I first, because I've got both an iPhone and I have an Android phone. Um, of course you do. Of course I do. <laughs> so, uh, and I love both of them for very unique reasons. The uh, The Android phone, when I first turned it on, I had all of my contacts that were stored in Google instantly on my computer with their um, links to um, all my contacts, Twitter accounts, their LinkedIn accounts, their Facebook accounts, everybody, like 800 or 1,000 contacts, boom, were loaded in my phone and I had all of their information. It was just there wow. because it pulled it from my online mm -hmm. accounts. Um, my calendar was there. With iPhone, I find that it's more of a, it's a, per, it's Apple has got it built um, very well for personal use, but not mm -hmm. so much for business for use. For business use, but yeah. that's always been the sell of BlackBerry, hasn't it? It was a bit, the president of the United States had a BlackBerry. He yeah. may have an iPhone now, I don't know. Yes, that's a good point. I have, we should check into yes, that, we shouldn't should. we? We should check that's into that tweet about it later. President Obama. Yes, exactly. What, what kind of phone do you have? Mm. Uh, the, the BlackBerry is still doing okay. I mean, they still have, I think, about four... I think they reported $4.5 billion, mm -hmm. billion in revenue. So they still have a good market share, um, but it's reduced significantly over what they had before. I mean, they have about, I think the last report was 6.6 .6 or between 6 and 7% of the um, U.S. market share for um, smartphones. Sure. So not a lot compared to okay. iPhone and I Google. read if you have a friend, a boyfriend somewhere in the world, say in Paris, you can buy him on Twitter a beer. On Twitter. On Twitter and I haven't go tried through that yet. PayPal or something. I don't know if I've got it right, but you can buy somebody a beer in another location on your phone. <laughs> it was the oddest thing. Uh, well, Have you, you heard you, about you it? would just need an app for that. I mean, technically, it makes sense because as long as um, service providers are creating applications mm -hmm. that anybody can download, why couldn't you order them a coffee at Starbucks in well, Apparently, you a, can. A, a, it's very France. cool. I, I haven't mean, checked it out. You need to check that out for next time. I will check that out for okay, next time. Okay, because how you know now you'd have to call the hotel and say a friend of mine is going to show up in Toronto and I'd like to buy him a champagne. It's his birthday. Mm -hmm. La la la. This, and this way, if you could just go tweet. Bip Absolutely. and pay for it. Have you heard of Pinterest yet? No. Oh, it's the latest social network. It's um, it's all about pinning your favorite images and categorizing them. It is taking off like crazy. Wow, it's called Pinterest. Pinterest, so like interest, but Pinterest because you're Pinterest. pinning. You put a pin in your or a little button in your uh, web browser, right? And then when you like pictures that you see or when you're uploading pictures oh, see. from your mobile phone, okay. you pin it and you share it. So with rather the world. than Pictionary, you do Pinterest. Yes. Right? Thank you. Nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you too. Thank me. you, uh, Lindsay Smith, CEO of Massive Media, Media Inc. Remember, 
You can catch all of our conversations on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4.